Yes, good morning, children. So today, first, let's discuss the uh, syllabus of your term two. So let's see if we have done all the topics. So first of all, you'll have a reading section in your paper. So here you'll have two kinds of passages. One will be a discursive passage, and the other will be a case-based factual passage. Okay, with visual input or stats or chart and all. So two kinds of uh, you can say reading skills comprehension would be there. Then there would be writing part. And for the writing skills, you'll have a diary entry and a story writing, right? So story writing and diary entry, both we have done earlier also, but we'll be doing some more practice of diary writing. Then for grammar, we have got tenses, subject, verb, concord, models, determiners, reported speech, commands and requests, substatements and questions. So when we talk about sixth, seventh and eighth topic, commands, statements and questions, these are the kinds of sentences only Okay, statements, imperative sentences, uh, commands and requests are the imperative sentences, statements are the assertive sentences, and questions are interrogative sentences. So we all do them side by side. That is not something to be done separately, but even when we were doing transformation, we covered all these topics. Okay, so we'll be re doing revising all these topics side by side, and more than that, we'll be revising the grammar, just not these topics. We'll be doing the grammar, you know, in uh, like in totality, not just these topics which are given in syllabus. So otherwise, I guess we have done all these topics. Then there is literature. From the literature, we have got these chapters. See if we are done all. First, weathering the storm in Arsama. The last week, a house is not a home, the weather. So for these chapters, we have done. Then we had also done packing, reach for the top, the bond of love, if I were you in, the, in your previous PT3 exams. And the poems, no men are foreign on killing a snake to the snake crime. All these poems also we have done, right? We'll be revising all these poems for, for the examination point of view, but otherwise we've done the syllabus. That is what I'm pointing out, right? Any topic which you think you've not done yet, you need uh, to be redone again. We can uh, start that revision schedule from tomorrow, topic-wise topic. But my purpose is first, let us do grammar, even the topics which are not written here, so that you people become strong in grammar. Yes. Any topic which you think you've not done? Come on, raise hand or send the, send the message. Come on. So we'll be picking up active and passive voice. So first we need to understand like what is, uh, what is voice? Voice is what we speak. And when we say something, we either use it in active form or in passive form. What is active voice? If we talk about active voice, it is where the doer or the subject is important. Okay, in the active form of voice, doer or subject is important. For example, when I say, uh, I, I wrote this poem. In this kind of sentence, subject is, this is, this I is a subject. Wrote is the verb and this poem is the object. How do we know this? This is object in order to determine what the object is. We ask from the verb what? What wrote? The answer will be this one. So when you get the answer of what from the verb and the answer of what is object. Okay. So if you get the answer of whom from the verb, whom wrote, okay, whom taught, that happens to be the, this happens to be the direct object and it happens to be the indirect object. Further, I'm just giving you one uh, some knowledge only. Like, what are uh, objects? What are direct and indirect objects? If we talk about objects, there are two kinds of objects: direct object and indirect object. Direct object is something uh, upon which the uh, action passes over directly. Wrote the poem. Okay, he wrote. He wrote a poem. That is a direct object. Or if I say, I teach. English. So here I, I is subject, teach is verb, and teach what? 
English is then object, direct object. But if I say I teach you English, now here I is subject again, teach is verb, English is a direct object, then what is you? Whom I teach? I teach you. So this is indirect object. Okay. Indirect object is something uh, from, which gives the answer to whom from the work. So that is about the direct and indirect object. That is not my topic right now. But still, uh, as a matter of knowledge, you know, you can know this. So we were basically talking about like what is active voice. Active voice is that where the subject is important, where the subject is more important than the action. So here I is I wrote this poem. Here in this poem, the important thing is that I wrote this poem. Here the emphasis is upon the doer. But if I want to uh, stress, if I want to emphasize the action, then I'll be saying this poem was written this poem was written by me if you write with it that is optional okay even if you don't write by me you can manage so by me is optional you may write or you may not write because that doesn't make any difference so here the more important thing is like what has been done the poem was written so the action of writing the poem is more important than who wrote it. When the action is important, we write passive. So here when I'm, I was saying, I wrote this poem, it is active. And when I'm saying, when I'm saying this poem was written, this is passive. What, what's the difference between these two sentences? The difference is that here subject is more important that is a doer is more important when you say uh, who did this then you say ma'am i did this or uh, she did this so the point is he or i is more important than not the action who did i did so when i say i did it is active voice because here the subject is being expressed but when i'm expressing the object uh, action when I'm expressing like uh, uh, the table was broken, who broke it is not important. But what, what happened is more important. What happened means action is more important than we use passive voice. So this poem was written. Here you are not concerned like who wrote the poem, but here you are concerned about like what happened, what was written, this poem was written. Got it? So here in the passive, action is important, but in the active, subject is important. Don't say that here the object is important. It's not the object which is important, it's the action which is important. And we cannot talk about the object uh, all alone, was written. What was written? The poem was written. Let me give you more example of the difference between active and passive. Then we'll come to then then we'll talk about the rules. If I say uh, he made a mistake, he made a mistake. So here I want to say like he. I'm pointing out he made a mistake. Okay, here subject is important for me to tell you. I'm pointing out that he made a mistake. This he can be any name also. If anyone is present around me, then I may name that uh, Rahul made a mistake. I'm naming Rahul. So Rahul is more important than what happened. But then somebody asked me, what happened? Then I'll say, a table was broken a table was broken then who broke the table is not important but what is important is like what happened or what was done the table was broken a table was broken 
So I can complete it by Rahul, by him, or anyone. So this is optional. That is not very important. The more important thing is a table was broken. So this action was more important for me to tell. Okay, it depends upon the speaker, like what he wants to express that. Sometimes the name is important, that is the subject is important, then we use active voice. And when the action is more important, then what happens? Passive voice is more important. Okay, otherwise uh, active and passive voice have no relevance if we don't know this difference. Is that clear? When we want to talk about the subject, when, when our focus is subject or the doer, we use active form. But when the action is more important, then we use passive form. Please remember this. Because without this knowledge, active and passive voice, the knowledge of active and passive voice is no use. You should basically know like where to use active and where to use passive. Is that clear? Now, for example, you people say like uh, a new flyover was inaugurated. Or you say the chief minister inaugurated the chief minister inaugurated the flyover. One thing is the chief minister inaugurated the flyover. Then you say like, uh, or you say the flyover was inaugurated yesterday. So here by is not important by the chief minister. So that is not that important. The more important for me is, or for you is, that the flyover was inaugurated. Now the problems will be solved. Now you don't have to bother about going there. You won't be caught in traffic jam because the flyover was inaugurated. Because the flyover has been inaugurated. Don't worry about the traffic jams now. So when I'm saying like this, then for me, the action is more important that the flyover has been inaugurated. But when you say like, uh, uh, who, who inaugurated the flyover? Then your answer will be the chief minister of Punjab inaugurated the flyover. Then for me, the name, like the subject or the doer is more important to answer than what happened. So it depends from situation to situation whether we want to stress the subject or whether we want to stress the action. That is our choice. That is the requirement. That is not about like, I want to stress the action only. No, that is as per the requirement of the sentence. When this will be the news, supposing you have, you are a news report, a reporter, you have to cover this news report in the newspaper. What heading he headline will you go for? Will you write the chief minister inaugurates a flyover or the flyover getting inaugurated? I'm writing two, uh, I'm writing two, uh, uh, what we say, headlines. And you people tell me, like, what is uh, the correct headline? Is that clear? I'm saying the chief minister, let us remove the, because in the headlines, we don't include the uh, articles and all. Chief minister, Mr. XYZ inaugurates flyover or the flyover gets inaugurated. Okay, now tell me which one will you go for? One or two? What is correct as a headline? You can send message. <clears throat> you can send message. No need to raise hand. Okay. Jia Jambi says two. Uh, so Japaji says one. Tanveen says second. One. Okay, let me repeat. 
the gushan says one okay when you are writing it for the newspaper when you are a reporter when you are writing the, when you are going to make it your headline then what will be more important that the flyover both not cause in second the is there never mind it's not that hard and fast rule that the is not to be used but we should avoid it okay it's not that hard and fast okay i have removed now you can make out what is correct i'm again reminding you when we uh, write the newspaper reports then there it also matters like who did this here it is important that the chief minister of punjab inaugurated the flyover than saying that the flyover gets inaugurated it's not any abc person will go and inaugurate the flyover okay the chief minister needs to be mentioned there in the newspaper report okay in the newspaper the names matter in the newspaper names matter okay the titles the designations matter so chief minister mr xyz inaugurate the flyover that is the news that is correct and it's wrong because when you are writing the report for the newspaper then the title will be chief minister inaugurates the flyover that is important not that flyover gets inaugurated when we say this it means that i don't mind who did this but as a reporter you mind it names are important designations are important when you are writing for the newspaper is that clear but when you are talking with your friends that now you won't have to bother about the traffic jams because the flyover has been inaugurated then it's okay then you don't mention chief minister but in the newspaper report it's a designation which matters the most like who did what okay so as a reporter you need to write this okay so there this is active form okay now i'm giving you one more example and tell me what is correct there is one more news again the news headline okay uh, a house gets okay let's not write a negative news let's write some news which is not a uh, uh 14 years old lad tops ias examination ias that's it okay or ias topped by 14 years old so what is more important what's like better as a newspaper report yes you can send message okay jap ji says one okay yes others can also send the news says two okay navneet also says two tanveen says one karim also says two okay many children are uh, in favor of second one okay now the point is when you are a newspaper reporter then what will be your mood uh, what will be uh, like here what is more important is uh, is it more important to tell that ias examination has been topped or is it more important to tell that a 14 years old child has topped answer my this question now what is more important announcing that ias examination has been topped or 14 year old child has topped more important thing is ias gets topped by one or the other person always okay always each year somebody tops in ias examination so that is not a big issue but the big issue is that a 14 year old child has topped so this is more important to mention the doer is more important here so this will be a better news you will be using the active form that a 14 years old child gets tops ias examination here it's not important like which examination has been topped 
but the more important thing is that who has stopped and that is only a 14 year old child right okay i'm giving you one more example and you people again make out like which news report is correct CBSC announces results of class 10th or class 10th results declared or announced, whatever. Announced by CBSC. So what will you, what do you think is better as a news reporter? What is better? Okay, you are saying uh, second. Okay, okay, Kirti also says second. Anshia also says second. Hmm. Okay, Gudshan also says second. Okay, okay, now the answer was first, not second. You know why? Because class 10th results are to be announced by so many boards. PSEB has also to announce, CBSE has also to, be, to announce, ICSC has also to announce it. Other boards, okay, MP, Madhya Pradesh, SC also has to announce, Andhra Pradesh board has also to announce, Himachal Pradesh board has also to announce. So many boards have to announce the results of 10th standard. But it is CBSC who has announced the result. So here it is important, like which board result has been declared? So CBSC announces results of class 10. So that is a better one than this one because there are so many class 10 results to be announced. Is that clear or not? CBSC announces results of class 10. Any doubt here? Anyone who feels that, uh, no, no, ma'am, you are wrong. Or anyone who has a like doubt, doubt, raise hand. If you don't have doubt, if you all agree with me, then please uh, let me know this. Say agree, right? Okay, Garima agrees, Anshia and Vedita all agree, okay. Let me see who doesn't chat. Let me check, check the chats. Which children are actively chatting? Okay. So Jia, Janvi, Japji, Gurshan, Tanveen, Gurshan, Kirtima, Gurshan, Japji, Gurshan, Navnoor, Garima, Garima, Tanveen, Tanveen, Gurshan. Then this Jia, Janvi, Gurshan, Kirtima, Gurshan. Most active is Gurshan. Jia Janvi, Gurshan again, Kirtima. Gurshan is there, Japji, Japji, Gurshan, Kirtima, Kirtima, Anshya, Gurshan, then Jia Janvi. Ishani has also come, Nivedita, Garima, Garima, Anshya, Nivedita, Tarneen, Japji. Keshav also agreed now. Very good, Keshav. Well done, you're there. So only these seven or eight children are actively participating in the. Now the Shah also raised hand. The Shah sent chat, sent the message. Okay, Dhare has also written now, agree. When you, uh, if I open chat for you people, then you send message. Okay, your sending message only means that you're attentive at that end of the class. Okay, now we are not, I'm not giving you option to speak up. Okay, there are some security reasons. You all understand, I guess. So when I'm asking you to chat with me only, then you can send simple message that only shows that you are attentive. Okay, write down the things in your notebooks also and uh, send a suitable message over here just to show that you are active. And believe me, you will really become active. Okay, Tushar. Okay, now. So that is what I told you about the importance of narration. Oh, sorry, voice. Okay, otherwise active and passive have no relevance. If you don't know where to use what, Right? Right? Now let us see like how the active and passive voice, their rules are formed. Active voice is, when we talk about active voice, 
we are basically talking about the simple rules of tenses simple rules of tenses whatever tenses we have done their simple rules are the active rules okay when i say simple present tense so simple present tense is the same active rule for the active voice rule of simple present tense is same what we did for tenses so that is in the simple present tense we use first form of verb and if it is a negative sentence we use do or does plus not is used plus first form is used right same is about the interrogative the do or does take first form of verb and in the end there is a question mark so that is about the simple present tense for example i say she plays ludo she plays ludo this is present indefinite you all know and when we change the voice of the sentence then what what will happen in the active subject is more important that she plays ludo see or she plays ludo she is such an active girl she all she enjoys indoor games she but when i want to talk about uh, the game so ludo is played ludo is played in this house or ludo is played by her so here is played so this plays has become is played there is a difference this is also first form of verb and is is also first form of verb so tense has not changed so the golden rule of active and passive voice is that the tense of voice doesn't change in the direct and indirect speech you know when the reporting verb was in past tense then the tense of the reporting speech changes from present to past and past to past perfect but in active and passive voice the tense doesn't change active uh, present remains present past remains past and and future remains future we don't change tense of active and passive voice but what changes what has changed over here because the object has been made the subject okay she plays ludo their subject was she is subject but when i say ludo is played by her then ludo has become subject now i am talking about ludo now this this thing has become subject here i was talking about she but here i am talking about ludo so because the object has changed i can't say ludo plays ludo cannot play herself ludo is played by her okay so here the by her is become has become the agent of the action so the ludo is played by her the verb will change it's only the form will change okay play will become played we will be using third form of verb in the passive voice everywhere but the tense will remain the same here it was present the present form of b is is so ludo is played by her if i say ludo she played ludo because it is second form here also we'll make it second form ludo was played was is also the second form played will remain same will you use a third form of verb everywhere in the passive voice we'll be talking about the rules children tomorrow okay or on monday so this much is enough i guess you can make it out like what's the difference between active and passive voice just prepare this much okay so there will be uh, okay uh here i'm i'll repeat the whole thing again on monday okay don't worry